This is the 2018 Cadillac ATS-V Coupe. It's rear-wheel drive and has a 3.6-liter twin-turbo V6. Stock, it puts out 464 horsepower, almost 40 more than the F82 M4. But of course, this car is in stock. It's technically full bolt-on with a tune, intake, downpipe, and a fuel cam. We also can't forget that it's lowered and has wider tires to hold that extra power. I must admit, I do have a soft spot for these Ford Star F14 wheels. The car rides on architecture that's almost 10 years old and frankly, it's starting to show its age. But that doesn't mean it can't hold its own. The ATS-V was only available for 4 years. Cadillac is replacing the lineup with the CT4 which has no real V variant yet. Well, it does, but it only makes 325 horsepower so I don't consider it a real V. The real V would be the Blackwing. So while we wait, let's see what this little American M4 rival can do. Today we'll do some hot laps around NJMP Thunderbolt and grab acceleration data for our fast list. This is Mike, but his name is really Peter. The car belongs to him, so I trust that he'll put down the best possible times. Let's get started. But first, let's get some of the important details out of the way. With these modifications in Pump 93 Octane, the ATS-V is expected to put down around 530 to 550 to the wheels. That's almost stock Z06 numbers right there and a little bit more than an FBO BMW S55. This particular car is the 8-speed automatic, but you can also get it in 6-speed manual. It's also the GM8090, but it feels better than the one in my Z06, maybe because it's tuned and has cooler paddles. I can't help but fall in love with the Vector Blue Metallic. This color really makes the car pop. This thing weighs 3,800 pounds, and I expected some noticeable body roll, but for some reason it felt pretty decent around these simple corners, probably because of the springs and wider stance. And like most Cadillac products, the exhaust could use a little bit of help. It's not terrible with the downpipe, but it lacks any sort of rawness or aggression. And again, this is a Cadillac. Let's get it on the track. As mentioned previously, the time to beat here is 1 minute and 30 seconds. Now let's do that straight line pair. Pardon the delta in quality. Due to COVID-19, the work had to be done remotely. Okay, so. Now for the times. Gonna warn you though, you might be a little shocked because honestly I was a bit surprised myself. Let's start the lap times. This ATSV put down a best lap of 1 minute 35.86 seconds. It's pretty impressive considering it was Mike's first time at Thunderbolt, ever. For reference, the fastest BMW M2 recorded that day ran something like a 136.5. Of course there's a driver variable, 
and the added power does help. But keep in mind that on a track like this, tires and suspension play a much bigger role. Now for the bad news. Because of some technical difficulties, we didn't get all the data that we wanted, only the rolling metrics. And even then, I feel like the car might still have a little bit more out of it. Anyway, this full bolt on ATSB did 40 to 100 in 5.81 seconds. That's slower than the power level suggests, but it's probably because it had to shift right around 44 miles per hour and traction looked like it was a problem down low. 60 to 130 is where things start to make a little bit more sense. The car did it in 8.15 seconds, which puts it right behind the 707 horsepower Hellcat Challenger. Like I said, I think the car has a little bit more in it, so I think an 8 flat or even a high 7 second time is not out of the question here. For my metric viewers, 100 to 200 kilometers per hour happened in 6.88, which lands it right in that entry level supercar realm. Impressive, but I've seen F80 M3s perform similar feats of speed. Fun fact, I never actually knew how rare ATSVs were until this video. There are only about 4,500 of them ever produced. And honestly, I think it's kind of special in this color. On top of that, this notion that American cars can't handle definitely doesn't apply here. I feel like it's sort of a hidden gem and I don't know why I never sold better. Because it's not like it was expensive or anything. At just under $70,000 MSRP, it's basically the same price as a BMW M4. Maybe it just wasn't marketed right. Who knows? Anyway, in my opinion, Cadillacs generally don't age that well, and the interior design on this car is starting to feel a little outdated. On top of that, the target demographic is usually a little bit older. At the end of the day, I still think the car is attractive from certain angles, and the competition seats really gave it the extra touch. I didn't get a lot of seat time, so I can't comment on the overall driving feel. But ultimately, I'm excited to see what they do with the upcoming Blackwing series, because this whole compete with the Germans thing is starting to show some results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by leaving a thumbs up and comment below. Also, don't forget to take a look at our merch store and support the channel. And if this is your first time here, check out some of my other stuff. I produce high quality cinematic car content, so if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon for new episodes every Thursday. Thanks for watching.